My name's Mark Gladman. I'm Professor of Colorectal Surgery at Concord Hospital. And I'm involved with some of my colleagues in the delivery of some units that uh, form part of the Masters of Surgery and that will be incorporated into a new graduate certificate of surgical sciences, which I'll talk to you a little bit about this evening. But first of all, I suppose this is relatively easy for me tonight. I've got to first of all convince you that a career in surgery is the right choice and for most of you by virtue of the fact that you're here that's relatively an easy task. This one I think you'll be a little bit more interested in. What does it take to be a surgeon? And that will segue into the new graduate certificate in surgical sciences and I will elaborate on uh, some of the streams and units within the new graduate certificate. So why surgery? Well you're here, so I've just got to emphasise and uh, hammer home the message. For me, it's very easy. Surgeons are faced with clinical problems such as this. In this case, this is a, a patient that was unwell for anonymity. Well, I'm just going to show you the CT scan. We are faced with a clinical problem. We have to consider a series of options, some of which may include operative management. We then consider those options and we deliver a solution that hopefully will fix the problem. And very often that sequence of events happens in minutes, hours, and for those of you that are a little bit impatient, sometimes in days to see the patient return to this condition. So for me the results are very often immediate and patients are very acutely unwell and surgeons have the potential to reverse that acute issue to hopefully achieve a very good outcome. If that hasn't convinced you, just have a look at the rate of change within surgery that we're currently uh, exploring. So this was surgery in the early 19th century, very, very uh, sophisticated backdrop as you can see there. We moved on into the early 20th century, we started to use instruments instead of tools to operate, and by the mid 20th century we were doing very refined operations through very large incisions but we realized that they had quite a detrimental effect on patients, so there was a move towards keyhole and minimally invasive techniques. And this is where it gets exciting because in a few, de few short decades, we've moved to the digital era of laparoscopic surgery, and this is your future that lies ahead of you. This is robotic surgery. At the current time, we've got an a console that is within the same operating room, but it's not too hard to imagine that this could be placed remotely in the future and you don't even need to be in the same room as the patient that you're operating on. If you're still not convinced, that's the surgeon's uh, yacht <laughs> hide up in the bay at Monaco. So, what does it take to be a surgeon? The not academic surgeons have to say, these are, these are other surgeons. So what does it take to be a surgeon? Well, I'll draw your attention to about halfway through this video clip because the real essence of surgery is summarised for you. <laughs> so, those attentive amongst the audience, these are good qualities of a surgeon, so as summarised by Sir Lancelot Spratt, the eye of a hawk, heart of a lion and the hands of a lady. This is a very real job description for a surgical position, so for an intern position. This is from the 1970s, so apologies that it's a little difficult to read. I showed some of you this at the Surgical Society meeting recently. But just have a look at this, and you'd be grateful to know that times have changed slightly. But no attention will be paid to length of duty. And if you avert your eyes to the bottom, it's stressed that only the highest standards are acceptable. Clock watchers, scrimmers, and shear shrankers are not welcome and should apply for less demanding jobs which are readily available in other hospitals. So what does that mean? Well, because of those attractive qualities of surgery, competition is fierce, and that's what I want to talk to you about this evening, because it's always been fierce and it will remain very competitive. And you shouldn't really be scared of that, but you do have to have a strategy in mind as to how you're going to uh, get that job. And somebody, of course, does have to get the job, but you've just got to make sure that it's you. And for that, you need a strategy. So you've got to grab the attention of the appointments panel. There are several ways of doing that. I wouldn't recommend either of these. But you can stand out in the same way, perhaps a little bit more subtly, on paper and during interview. 
And allied to that, there are some challenges that you'll face early on in your career. Not only do you have to be appointed so that you can begin your training, there's an exam in your first year of training that will determine whether you continue on your career path. And of course, you've got to be able to demonstrate that you're up to the job. Having been appointed, there's the minor issue of doing some surgery, so you need to learn some skills based around operative surgery. So they can be summarized in this slide. They represent three very clear hurdles. First of all, you've get a, got to get onto the training program. Then you've got to pass the part one, the surgical sciences exam of the Royal Australasian College. And you've got to learn how to do your job. You've got to learn how to operate. The College of Surgeons summarizes the necessary components of the training program within these core competencies. And it's all delivered within the surgical education and training framework. This is available on the college website, and it shows the pathway to application to gain entry into set training. And there are some decisions to be made because there are subspecialties in which you can train. Selection works around these three areas, and that's been a, con a constant for several years, although the proportions of marks allocated has varied. And last year, marks were awarded on this basis. So 15% from your paper application, 25% from your performance at interview, and importantly 60% from referee reports. So this demands that you're prepared and that you can score points on your application, face to face in interview, and also have impressed your referees along the way so that they will support your application for set training. And that's hopefully you at the end of that process, but then the real work begins. And there's the contents of several large textbooks to digest, memorize, and be ready to regurgitate for the purposes of the primary examination. And that leads us to the Graduate Certificate in Surgical Sciences. So at its very core, the aim of the Graduate Certificate is to provide a bedrock for your early career as a young surgeon. And it focuses squarely on preparation for the primary FRACS part one examination in surgical sciences. It will also acknowledge the importance of you being able to perform in your job. So there are ample opportunities outside of the operating room environment to acquire surgical skills. And of course, it will lead to a postgraduate qualification, which will help improve and, and boost your CV. And with these areas addressed, we'll uh, furnish you with a competitive edge to make you stand out from your peers. So information related to the graduate certificate is found on the Discipline of Surgery website. And if you haven't familiarized yourself with this, it's worth a look through the content. Um, within the Discipline of Surgery website, across to the left-hand side there, you'll see the list of postgraduate courses on offer. And there are currently three postgraduate courses by coursework available. There's the pre-existing Masters of Surgery and a Doctorate of Clinical Surgery. And then there's the newly introduced and about to be launched Graduate Certificate in Surgical Science. And I'd just like to concentrate a little bit of time on that because it is the newest and therefore the one that you'll probably be least familiar with. So again, this is just emphasizing some of the content from the webinar from a week or two ago. The Graduate Certificate in Surgical Sciences requires the acquisition of 24 credit points. This does link in and integrate potentially with the Masters of Surgery, the pre-existing Masters of Surgery. So if these credit units are not applied to the graduate certificate, they can be carried over to the masters for subsequent completion of additional units and full award of the masters in surgery. I've already told you that the coursework is aimed squarely at the preparation for the primary examination of the fellowship. And I should just tell you that your number of attempts in that exam are limited by the college. And if you're unsuccessful, within the three or on occasion four attempts that you're allowed, you're removed from the training program. 
and trying to acquire the sort of knowledge and depth of knowledge that that exam tests you on is quite a formidable task when you're engaged in busy clinical jobs that, uh, that you're sure to be engaged in. So some additional structured tuition to help prepare for that exam has been the most common feedback that we get from um, our young surgeons sitting the exam, that there really are very few courses and resources to help them prepare and therefore be success successful in that exam. So I know there's been some interest in our students in the medical program and advanced and highly performing medical students will be eligible for application in stage three, so in years three and four. Um, the recommendation is that those four compulsory units will be completed across the two years with the completion of one unit per semester per year. Each unit of study will, uh, will count for six points and therefore 24 in total, leading to the award of the graduate certificate. The four compulsory units of study are demonstrated on this slide and you'll see that there's no apology for focusing on those two key areas that I've already mentioned. First and foremost, for 5032, 34 and PATH 500, preparation for the primary FRACS examination. And then SURGE 5031 is aimed at furnishing you with basic and laparoscopic surgical skills that you'll be able to learn in a simulated workshop environment, both dry and wet labs and virtual reality simulators through to enable you to apply those in the uh, operating theatre. A lot of the other information is available on the website and it is quite detailed and probably will be quite laborious for me to run through each of the core units and the streams required. I want to provide you with an overview to give you a flavour of the, uh, the new graduate certificate and I'd be happy to take questions for clarification around some of these areas. But my take home message really is that there are no apologies from us in that we focus this directly on getting you ready in the early part of your career. We want to make sure that you're successful first time at passing the examination. So we'll give you some structured education around those surgical sciences to get you skilled up ready for the examination. We'll teach you the crucial basic surgical skills and laparoscopic skills that will remain with you for your entire career. They're the bedrock of good surgical practice and uh, there's a unique opportunity to learn that in the environments that we have here within the university and of course it will furnish you with a postgraduate qualification giving you that competitive edge. Thank you very much. I'll take your questions.